All right, so now we know how rational tangles can be constructed from empty tangles by applying a set of operations. Just by twisting and by rotating, we can build a whole class of tangled up objects that then we can use to ultimately, we hope, study something about knots. Uh, and we've seen at least a bit of a taste of how to associate with a given rational tangle a rational number. But up until this point, that process has been pretty clumsy, uh, because we would have to know how that tangle was built out of a series of operations, twists and rotations, that don't commute with one another, which have complex relations in the presentation of the tangle group. So what we want to do next is to think about tangles in a different way. Instead of thinking of them as being built out of a series of geometric operations, what we'd like is to be able to see tangles as being built out of a set of arithmetic operations. In other words, being built out of additions and multiplications in a way that has a predictable effect on the tangle number that will then let us compute the tangle number for a given tangle in a simpler way, and maybe more importantly, also give us a recipe for going the other direction. Given a rational number, how to determine what rational tangle that number should be associated with. So a quick refresher on where we've been up until this point. Um, we decided that we could represent the tangled group, which is the group of all operations that we can do to turn one tangle into another. We can represent it by operations on rational numbers in a faithful way, that every different operation we can do to tangles is a different kind of operation on rational numbers and vice versa. Every different thing we can do to rational numbers we can represent somehow by a unique operation on tangles. We did that by associating with this twist operation, t, which adds a twist on the right side of a tangle, the arithmetic operation addition by 1, the function t of x equals x plus 1, operating on the rationals. And by associating the rotation by 90 degrees of a tangle with the operation of the opposite reciprocal. So in our last set of videos, we spent our time figuring out how knowing the geometry of those operations and the abstract algebra of those operations, we could then go hunting for functions on the rational numbers which faithfully reproduce those same relations. So this is great, except that, again, thinking about rational tangles as being built out of all of these operations acting geometrically um, turns out to be a fairly challenging thing to do. So the question for today is what do these operations on tangles tell us about adding and multiplying tangles in general? Because rational numbers are things we feel like we know how to add, we know how to multiply, they satisfy, addition and multiplication satisfy a lot of nice properties in the rational number system. So how can we think not just about adding one and taking opposite reciprocals of tangles, but how can we think about adding tangles to one another, or multiplying tangles by one another, or taking reciprocals of tangles? How can we think about those operations that we know from the rational numbers operating on tangles instead? So we're going to take each of our tangle group operations one at a time. First, thinking about the twist operation. In gamma, the tangle group, the twist merely adds a, uh, a twist, uh, just one more crossing over to the right side. Uh, you'll notice today we're actually using a different convention for what makes a positive crossing. For today's convention, we're going to use that uh, this twist over here, where the upward, uh, upward sloping strand goes over, uh, we're going to consider that to be our, our positive one twist for today. So as an operation, we think of it as twisting up the right side of our tangle. But can we re-envision that operation as instead an addition of two tangles? So we want to see this not as a twisting, but as an adding. We could do that by thinking about this as taking the tangle G, our original tangle, and then setting another tangle, and we're going to call that tangle 1, this orange crossing right here. We're going to call that orange crossing the tangle 1, setting them alongside one another, and then just combining them together, connecting up the strands. We're going to call that the operation of addition for tangles. So we define the tangle 1, and we're going to use these brackets here to indicate that we're talking about a tangle here and not a number, the tangle positive 1 as this single crossing tangle where the upward sloping strand goes over the downward sloping strand. And then we'll define g plus 1 as the tangle that we get by taking the tangle g and putting this one tangle on the right side of it and then connecting up the strands horizontally. And then that expands out generally to the addition of any two tangles, g and h, just by placing them side by side with g on the left and h on the right, and then connecting up the horizontal strands to make a single tangle. 
out of a pair. So that's going to be how we define what it means to add one tangle to another tangle. Making that definition also clues us in to what the additive identity in the addition of tangles would look like. It's got to be the horizontal empty tangle. To see why, let's just imagine taking any old tangle G and tacking, let's say, on the left side, the empty tangle by addition. What that's going to do is it's going to connect this horizontal empty tangle to G on the top and bottom. But notice that doesn't actually change anything fundamentally about the identity of this tangle, because we could just shorten these strands, these horizontal strands, back up, and we would be back to G. So adding this empty tangle on the left-hand side of G doesn't actually change the isotopy type of G, because we can just shorten those strands and we're back where we started. And the same is true of adding the horizontal empty tangle on the right side. So for the moment, we're being really careful about the order in which we add two tangles using this new addition operation. Right? That adding G plus a tangle H situates H on the right side of G, whereas adding H plus G would situate H on the left side of G. And the dangerous question for us to ask at this point is, is it going to be true that addition of tangles, the way that we've defined it here, is commutative? in the same way that addition of rational numbers is commutative? And that's a question that we're not going to get a satisfying answer to uh, until maybe a little bit later on. Uh, we've got to build up a little bit more theory, because it turns out the answer to this question is not necessarily. Sometimes yes, sometimes not so much. But this is how we'll define addition of tangles, motivated by this idea that adding a twist on the right side of a tangle should increase my tangle number by one. That was, after all, how we began, began to get into this mess in the first place. So how about multiplication? We're going to have to come at multiplication from a slightly different way, because in our tangle group we don't know how to multiply, but we do know how to take opposite reciprocals, because that's what we represented the rotation operation by. So as an operation in the tangle group, um, this rotation by 90 degrees achieves an opposite reciprocal. To figure out what that has to do with multiplication, let's think about taking that opposite and that reciprocal and thinking of those as two separate operations on tangles. Can we divorce the two of them in a way that when I do them in succession, we end up getting this simple rotation? So we'll do that by thinking of the opposite step as being our first step and defining that opposite step the same way that we did when we were first thinking about knots and crossings in the introduction to the semester, taking the opposite of a tangle all it does is it reverses all the crossings, just like taking the opposite of a knot, reversed all of its crossings from overs to unders or unders to overs. So we're going to think of that as the secret first step in taking an opposite reciprocal. And then the second step, the reciprocal part, is whatever is necessary to complete this process of getting us the rotated tangle. And so, perhaps a little bit confusingly, we're going to think of reciprocal as doing another opposite and then doing a rotation. Um, before we go there, let's get a quick example of what it's going to look like to reverse crossings in one of our rational tangles. We met this tangle, the one tangle, on our previous slide. Right? This is the single crossing with the positive slope strand going over and the negatively slope strand going under. If I reverse its crossing, its only crossing, then I get a new tangle that we're going to call the opposite of the one tangle. And notice it's not exactly the same as this one. But just to make our notation simpler, uh, because we might find it useful to add these kinds of tangles into our arithmetic system as well. Instead of calling it the opposite of the one tangle, we're going to call it the negative one tangle. That's just a definitional dodge. Uh, so what we mean by the negative one tangle is the opposite of the one tangle. Single crossing, except now the negatively sloped strand is going over and the positively sloped strand is going under. So these are going to be our basic building blocks uh, for bigger tangles, the, the one tangle and the minus one tangle. All right, so what about this reciprocal step? In order to finish our opposite reciprocal, which is represented by a rotation, we now need to do two things. We need to not only rotate this tangle, but we also need to re-flip its crossings. And so that's how we're going to define the reciprocal of a tangle. The reciprocal will both rotate and reverse a tangle. So 1 over g, we're going to define as this rotated and reversed tangle. And as an example of that, let's suppose that I start out with the tangle 2 which by definition is going to be 1 plus 1. In other words, the one tangle and another one tangle to its right joined up to give us two crossings, where in both crossings the upward sloping strand is going over the, the, the downward sloping strand. So this is our tangle 2, 
what would its reciprocal look like? Well, to accomplish a reciprocal, I have to do two things. First of all, rotate the tangle, and then reverse the crossings in that tangle. And when I do that, this is the tangle that I get, which we're going to call 1 over 2. So this is the reciprocal tangle. And because we're going to, in general, be looking at some complicated rational tangles, and we'd like to know what positive looks like and what negative looks like, the, the quick and dirty tip for that is to consider that the sign of a twist, whether a twist is a positive twist or a negative twist, is the same thing as the slope of the strands which are going over. So in this tangle here, even though it's vertical, the, the overcrossings are being achieved by the, uh, the, the lines that have a positive slope in this diagram. So this is a positive twist. Whereas, for example, this negative one twist back there is a negative twist because it's downward. It's negative sloping strand is going over and the, uh, the other strand is going under. Now, what does this have to do with multiplication? To figure that out, we're actually going to define the multiplicative identity not in the way that you might think. Rather than thinking of the number one, or the one tangle, as being a multiplicative identity, what we want is something that's going to be a lot more easily cast in the identity role. For addition, that was the horizontal tangle, because if we add a horizontal tangle, we can just reshorten those strands, and we have the same tangle as we started with. For multiplication, we're going to call the multiplicative identity tangle the infinity tangle. And it needs to be something that's going to be easily seen to be a neutral element with respect to multiplication. And the most neutral tangle that we can think of that we haven't already used is 1 over the zero tangle. In other words, the reciprocal of the zero tangle, which is why we call this one infinity. Right? We're thinking of infinity and zero as being reciprocals in this example. And what would it mean to take the reciprocal of the empty horizontal tangle? Well, we have to reverse all of its crossings, which does nothing. And we have to rotate that tangle so that instead of being horizontal, it's now vertical. So the infinity tangle is this vertical empty tangle. And that's easily seen to be the multiplicative identity if we define multiplication of tangles as rather than a horizontal juxtaposition and joining of tangles, define it as a vertical juxtaposition and joining of two tangles. So we define g multiplied by h, we'll use this star here to represent multiplication, as the result of putting h below g and then connecting up those two strands to get us a single tangle. So addition of tangles connects tangles horizontally. Multiplication of tangles connects tangles vertically. We're also going to define two more operations uh, before we go forward and then ask the interesting question, what do these operations do as it relates to the arithmetic and tangle type? The first is the vertical flip of a tangle, which is exactly what it sounds like. We take the tangle and we reverse it vertically. In other words, we draw a horizontal axis of flipping and we reflect over that horizontal axis. So I call it a vertical flip. Um, horizontal flip defined likewise. We set a vertical axis of symmetry and then we reverse the tangle over that axis of symmetry. Um, now it would seem that both of those operations are different than anything else that we have on either of our two slides so far. So the question that we want to ask next is we've seen how addition of tangles seems like an operation that will matter, an operation that would be useful for us to build up new tangles from old. Also now we've seen multiplication as an operation that should be valuable for us in building new tangles from old. We task addition with building our tangles out horizontally. We task multiplication with building our tangles out vertically. So what about these other things? What about vertical flipping, horizontal flipping? How do we realize their effect on the arithmetic of tangles? What's the meaning going to be? And it turns out, here's your cliffhanger, that they don't have any arithmetic meaning. In other words, flipping a tangle vertically or flipping a tangle horizontally for rational tangles actually doesn't change the tangle one bit. And that's surprising, and like all surprising things in mathematics, it's going to require some proof and a little bit more theory around it. So what we're going to do in our next video is look at operations we can do to tangles that don't matter at all to the arithmetic. And those are going to be so valuable for us because they're going to give us a way of rearranging a tangle uh, into what we might think of as the lowest terms for that tangle. Uh, so that's going to get us to the canonical form for a rational tangle, which then is going to connect us to a canonical way for us to find the tangle number.